Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity up right hand corner. We have Adame KX89 as the red Protoss. Once again as the pink Zerg. I think he's selecting pink for that wonderful highlight. As it is. Bottom left, I'm going to read Agistol. Once again, Agis game one. This is on Bomb. I'm trying to think of the way to pronounce this. Bomb, uh, bomb Apocalypse? Bomb Eclipse? It's Eclipse, but with Bombastic Star League stuff. Bombastic Eclipse? I think that's what it was. Bombastic Eclipse. Oof. Already off the bat, things not working out well for Agistol because he's got this drone that's... And I think this is Nerves playing into it. This drone is not mining, and it does not look like he has spotted that yet. So that's going to be a disadvantage. Triple League, there's kind of a big range in skill. By the way, new BSL season has started, so if you want to hop in and play and see where you stand on the ladder, go ahead and dive in and do it. Uh, you just need to make a BSL tag, sign up, go to bombasticstarleague.com to check it out. Probe Scout dropping a pile. I'm going to go ahead and move out and scout just in case. Now that drone's mining. Phew! It's like, is this game going to end because he's down a drone right off the bat? So we do have an Overlord being built, so we're going to probably... We'll see if we see an Overpool or a 12th hatch build. A little harder to pull off 12th batch builds on the two-player maps, uh, particularly when you get that drone scout out early. I think that is why we saw a Probe scout very early to go ahead and disrupt any sort of 12th hatch shenanigans that might be happening. We see a drone moving out to go ahead and get a scout in the Protoss opponent space. And once again, we see... Uh, Adame KX89 going for, I'll just stick to Adame. Adame going for more, maybe Ada. Going for Overpool build once again, which I think is wise to deal with this. Because you don't want to have, it's just annoying. It's very difficult. You have to micro really well, pull additional drones off the line. Plus, um, a little bit safer dealing with gateway pressure, getting that early Overpool. Looks like that drone is going to see that gateway. But this is a little bit off meta. Uh, for these days, because oftentimes what you're seeing instead these days is 973 and early Forge Fast Expands. So neither of these players kind of playing at um, that meta area. Probe sneaking around, being a sneaky snake at that 9 o'clock. I think he's hoping to swing around and get an additional scout in later and not have it denied to the Zerglings. But honestly, I feel like still no Zerglings being produced, so might come a little bit later. Alt well, there's the spawning pool, we'll see if it... They're not a, there weren't larvae being saved to produce a lot of zerglings in general, so I'm not sure that he would have gotten denied the scout, period, if he was willing to just, you know, hang around with it. So anyway, Probe, now in the base, going to see the three drones on gas, going to see... Oh! I like this. Hiding! <laughs> this is cute. So, that was real cute. That was really cute. So Adame, that was... I love it. So realizing he was going to have some trouble planting this hatchery, which I think that was the probe scout or the drone scout that was inside the base, came all the way back, was looking to plant. Instead of getting harassed by the probe, instead snuck and gave Adame just a loop. So now he's not going to know where that additional expansion is. He's trying to hunt for it. So now he's like, okay, where's that additional expansion? That's also going to slow down any sort of initial attack he might want to make. Let's see if he goes for that really quick zealot corsair pressure once again. And I'm hoping that Agistol adjust this time. Gets a few more Zerglings out, maybe plays a little bit more conservatively. Um, looks like he is getting an earlier Hydralisk Den to deal with this. This Zergling's going to see the Zealots on the front. Going to go ahead and back off before he uh, ends up getting bushwhacked. Fun word to say. Probe though! Ah! <laughs> so now he's going to be able to sneak back, see everything. I was about to say this is sometimes why it doesn't matter is if the probe still is able to sneak around and go ahead and get inside that base and get that scouting information it just doesn't it does not matter. Uh, gonna be able to see the the gas, the tech, see that hydralis den. I'm wondering if he's gonna still opt to go for no. See, this is a good adjustment on Adame. He's like, you know what? I see that you have that hydralis den. I'm gonna respect the fact that you might have hydralis to deal with my corsairs. So you know what I'm gonna opt to do instead? I'm gonna plop down additional gateways. Go ahead and get a citadel of dune. Goes just for zealot leg speed. And since I know you're gonna be a ways delayed off getting lair and any sort of tier two tech, I feel comfortable in doing this and pushing an attack. The Zergling, while the Zealots are out of position, able to sneak in, might get a probe kill. Is at the very least going to see that there's no Citadel of a Dune, and I'm wondering if this is going to spark a quick layer and Corsair counter. Plus, look at this. Look at this. No probes on gas. So this is going to be all Zealots all day. Forge being placed. Zerglings kind of fanning out and moving the way while the rest of those units were holding line. It's going to be a single Dragoon for Zealots at this stage. And the question is, is now it does, when does he move out? Is he just going to wait for Zealot leg speed? To counter this, I feel like Agistol could probably... Well, but let's see. He's, he's going... He's got Hydralisk speed upgrading. He can just build pure units to cope with this. But a little bit of defense and honestly a lot of... I feel like he could plop a single Sentinel colony or maybe even just some of the stuff... Just uh, 
SimCity, his front door was something, maybe in with additional hatchery, something along those lines, and then just drone pump a little bit and have that nice, solid defensive stand where he'll, because Adame, just now getting a cannon on the high ground, not even at the natural, he's going to be sitting at one base for quite some time. Looks like he is going to wait for that zealot leg speed before he decides to move out, and he's going to be doing so with, it looks like, not even a full control goop here. Uh, one critical thing, but this is a good handful of Hydralisks. They are speed upgraded. If they're going to be successful, they need to not be in this base in this quarter. They actually need to be out on the front dealing with these zealots and trying to attack them and stutter step with maybe some zergling pressure. The zerglings going to try to delay things by getting a run by. They are going to get a successful run by. The cannon right there, the drone, the probes have gone back to mining, but they're going to be able to sneak in, see level one weapons, see the Citadel Dune, still see no... Corsair, and also mining disruption is all these probes trying to pull off the line. I think Adami's like, screw it. Let's just go for an attack now. We'll deal with those Zerglings inside my base later. Let's see if he drops a cannon in his mineral line. But unfortunately for Adistol, that's going to be even fewer. Okay, there's the Sunken Colony. This is still going to be a hard defend because this is not a lot of Hydralisks to deal with all these Zelts. And these Zelts could just run by. Looks like they're positioning to do so. And that's going to force the Hydralisks to try to go for a blockade and be right on the line. Drones coming off the line. That something colony is not long for life, but it looks like this might be enough to defend this. Still three zealots and a dragoon standing. More zealots flooding in. It looks like they were, I'm not sure where they were in the midst of this attack. Three zealots, a handful of drones were killed. But that is going to be the entire attack force from Adame. And I think with some additional reinforcements, this might get cleaned up. Still producing hydralisks rather than zerglings, though. Going to back off with that. And now, okay, yeah, two more zealots on the front. So this is, but I... It depends on the micro. Depends on the micro and the reinforcements. Once again, Agistol. One critical thing is Agistol is being forced to produce units rather than building economy. Drones coming off the line once again, but I think this was only maybe two, maybe three drones that were... Uh, plus the Sunken Colony and a complete wipeout of any attack force from Adame. And so now Adame's lost map control. The thing I missed in the main is that cybernetic score was taken out by those sneaky Zerglings while all that attack was happening. And now Adame trying to set up with some cannons to go ahead and take his natural expansion, but Agistol, even though he's behind in overall supply, probe count, uh, things like that, still has some zealots he wants to run across the field. I feel like he should have, he's got the tech lead, right? So he just needs to go ahead and get those lurkers. As soon as he has those lurkers out in the field, it's gonna be a while before, actually, the where is the cybernetic score and how's he? Do you not need, you just need a Citadel? Huh, I did not realize this. You only need a Citadel, I should have known this. You only need a Citadel to plop that Protoss uh, Templar Archive. Zealots running into the natural expansion, second creep colony being placed down. Those Zealots gonna go ahead and back off. I thought you still needed a Cybernetic Score for this, so today I learned. Uh, but that's gonna allow some of those Dark Templar, those High Templar out in the field. So still, there's the Cybernetic Score to follow. Uh, I was a little bit worried about seeing maybe a Spire and some Mutalisks out in the field. Then Adame might have been in trouble, but I think the way everything's working out, he'll be A-OK. -okay. And instead, it looks like Agistol's just sticking defiantly, almost, to two, two Hatch Hydra. And he's moving out with his Hydralisks now. I think he's going to go for a Lurker contain at this stage. He's got Lurkers almost finished, so I think he's going to move up, maybe take this high ground right here, plant down a couple Lurkers, move from there. Move from there, I do know that a Robotics Facility is... The Cybernetics Core is required for that. So it's going to be a while before we see observers. Going to be a while. And 9 o'clock position is now being taken by Agistol. So right there on the front with those Hydralisks, still no lurkers being built. He doesn't have quite the economy uh, to plop a lot of them down. Probe has managed to sneak out, so he is going to see that 9 o'clock base being produced. Still no second gas, by the way, at the natural expansion. Speed upgrade to deal with those Dark Templar and get an Overlord on this front door, that'll be critical, because that will be one way that you might see some counter map control. This was a lot of resources, and that's five cannons before Nexus on this front door. And that shows you the respect of any sort of break or attack and what happens when you're lacking information. Dark Templar sneaking out is gonna see that Lurker. Might try to work on this Hydralisk line. Nice response by Agistol actually backing off with this. Now that Dark Templar trying to swing out is gonna maybe see if there's additional things to kill around the field. He might be able to get a lot of action done here at the nine o'clock. No Overlord in position right there. And um, Now the Overlord speed has finished, so that's gonna not completely neutralize, but that is going to put a little bit of a damper in those Dark Templars sneaking around the field. Robotics facility just now being built. This is still, thing is, is even with this robotics facility, this is nothing but Zealots and a single High Templar that just finished Storm. 
this is still very lurker containable. And this is a very oversaturated main and still no second nexus up and a third base. I got to give this to Agital. He's planting some additional hatcheries. Looks like the Hydralis are trying to hunt down that Dark Templar. They were, the Dark Templar still has zero kills. Um, I almost wonder if he wants to just keep like a skeleton crew of like, I don't know, four. So moving in that Overlord to go ahead and see what he's up against, seeing some additional gateways being planted. I almost feel like just, I don't know, leave a single Overlord and some four, with four Hydralisks pinned to it and let them go ahead and meander the base. In the meantime, just establish that Lurker Contain, get the bulk of your units on that front door so Dadame can't just break out. But Agistol getting, he's in a commanding position. He's sitting a little bit behind in the overall count as far as probes and drones and whatever not goes, but he's got three bases up, which is exactly where you want to be as a Zerg. He's got the skeleton of a Lurker Contain, and the tech of Adame is well behind, and he's very, very, very much in the dark. Very much in the dark. And we still don't see a observatory anywhere here uh, to deal with this, and still working on, it looks like, Dragoon range to tr try to deal with these Lurkers in the mid-game. But even, even if he had that, he needs to be able to see the Lurkers before he can do anything against them. Now, kind of that opportunity to break out, maybe when there's only one Lurker on the front, uh, has been somewhat missed. There's more Lurkers being produced on the front door, and that is going to be four Lurkers with some Hydralisks that can maybe plop against us. I don't think he even needs to go and approach this. I think he can just plant Lurkers absolutely everywhere. The Zealots, oh, there's the Observatory. The Zealots will mostly get taken out, because Zealots versus that, not happy. Looks like Edge still missing that. Dark, Clump, uh, that Dark Templar moving across that northern area. Nine o'clock base, adding additional hatcheries. This is going to be very difficult to take if a, well, sometimes if you get an additional lurker and you kind of plant it closer to the ramp right there, it's uh, one of those frustrating things to deal with. The Dark, Dark Templar moving its way back towards the main, but, and a little bit of a breakout here with the clumping. Those zealots, two of those zealots almost dead, three of those zealots, these are all very softened up. Look at the, you can see the health on them. That's, that's the thing with lurker and splash, especially with overlapping. Uh, he's lucky he didn't lose more of that attack force. That observer getting kind of dinged at with that overlord i think that's a sight range upgrade now we'll see it's going to come down to storms to break this let's see if he has the wherewithal to hit either the hydralisk oh good dodge he's going to lose the high templar gets a second okay loses the high templar but he does manage to take out about five hydralisks uh and agistal now starting to feel like i've got a large enough economy that i'm just going to start sweeping this is going to be this is the critical moment of the game i feel is adame going to be able to break out he's trying to swing around right now agistal just now starting to pump up the production he doesn't have much of an attack force to deal with this if he can pick off the observers maybe he could turn this attack around instead it looks like he's going to sack no i thought he was going to sack and move to the high ground is able to pick off one observer second observer on top of those lurkers and it's hydralisks finally on top of those zealots and it looks like adame trying to back off and regroup but he needs to press this. He needs to break out, take map control now, because if he does not, he could end up contained for the long, the length of this map. And he's he does have the level one weapons upgrade, so I feel like this is the time to do it. Lurker being taken, actually, nice split attack right there. Was able to get his dragoons on top of the lurkers. The hydralisks not engaging. It looks like they're rallied straight to the front, so not engaging in some attacks. The zealots have been wiped out by the hydralisks on the the high ground, and hydralisks versus dragoons is not a winning fight for Protoss, so Adame is going to go ahead and back off, and he is once again in danger of being sealed. Economically, he's doing okay, though. He's got about, a, I think he's got about the equivalent army he's won, if you look at the flat supply count, and Agistol has not sealed things in. It looks like he's going to hunt down this lone Dark Templar, sending the majority of his units to do so, and that is going to allow Adame to swing to the north, and maybe... Maybe between the attack forces he's got out in the field, he'll be able to establish this third base. But he still has to worry about Agistil coming in and getting another Lurker Contain and swinging around on the defensive. And critically, he just has no eyes. He doesn't have any Dark Templar. He doesn't have any Corsair scouting, anything like that. So he's playing very much in the dark. High Templar swinging around. Is he going to get a good storm here? Not quite in position to do so. Zelt's taking a lot of free hits as they're moving across. Agistil's still sitting with uh, mostly skeleton crews. Looks like there's another army of Hydralis. They are going to get on top of the Dragoons. So engagement on two fronts. These Zelt's going to get cleaned up. Looks like these Dragoons going to stop. Wow, stomp on... Woof! Storming his own Observer is going to take out a lot of... Hydralisk actually using both observers, so losing a lot of that critical tech. But he is going to be able to swing up to the 12 o'clock, is planting down his nexus, getting three additional cannons down. So at both, so able to establish his third base. However, Agistil going ahead and sneaking the upper. I almost want to say this is the 10 o'clock. We'll call this 9 o'clock. We'll call that 10 o'clock. Deal? Deal. Agistil still has map control, I feel. 
his level one, he's got level one carapace, level one weapons now, so he's starting to equalize that upgrade advantage. He is going to have the upgrade advantage momentarily because we do not have level two weapons spinning. Level one armor up, by the way, for these Dragoons. Level one weapons just starting, or level two weapons just starting uh, for Adame. Adame trying to hunt down this Hydalus force, but here's the thing. Look at this back, look at this army in the background here. This is where Agistol can just start producing pure army. And Adame needs to be careful because, again, if he loses this, if he's not pressing with his attack force, if he's not, uh, if he's just trying to hunt down some latent hydralisks, he does run the risk of losing some things in the background. But as I say that, this army might be able to just straight up dive on the 10 o'clock. They're still concerned about these units in the bottom right while losing more or less this entire attack force in the upper left hand corner. This is still the army he needs to worry about. Might need a cancel on this hatchery. Oh! Got the cancel just in time, so that's going to save him some resources because he surely would have lost that hatchery. So Agistol, uh let's see if he can get an engagement. Needs to burrow those lurkers right now. Unfortunately, they're burrowed a little bit in a clump. The observers on top of the lurkers, though, opting instead as a result to go for those hydralisks. Not uh, hit a couple of those hydralisks with that storm, but this army is once again going to get sent home. Because those storms just not hitting the clumps they wanted to, plus the observers taken out. And going to lose, wow, more High Templar, more Dragoons fleeing. One bonus for Adame is it looks like he's going to be able to perhaps establish this 1 o'clock base. This is a handful of Hydralisks moving up here. He does have a High Templar there. Needs some cannons to maybe provide some additional support. And, ooh, good storm there. Beautiful storm to push this army back. Agistol either needs to take a lot of additional bases himself to stay in this match, or he needs to go ahead and start doing some attacking or containing or something with the army that he's got on the ground. He is even on supply, which means he is ahead overall. Plus, he's got a sizable bank to start working with. Adame has a lot of spare gas, which lets you know that's not High Templar, which is really what he needs. Trying to plop down some additional cannons, but the cannon's still warping in. The Hydralisks are here, so he needs to buy himself some time and get some reinforcements. The reinforcements are flooding in from the right. Never mind, that's not reinforcement. Those are probes moving across to this base, and they're going to get decimated. That is not what you want to see. Agistol moving himself in a bit of a disadvantageous uh, slot. He might have wanted to stay on the upper ramp. I don't think there were any storms out of that High Templar. The Dragoon getting taken out. The Pylon going to get wiped out. That's going to unpower those cannons. And I think that is going to be it for Adame. It's going to end up losing that 1 o'clock base. His main was mined out. His natural is... He's still mining at two bases. But that's going to be a lot of additional bases for Agistol to take. He's going to go ahead and take that 10 o'clock. He's going to go ahead and take the 4 o'clock as well. He's going to have additional production. Plus, he's still mining at the main, even though it's getting thin naturally. He's still got that 9 o'clock, which is going to put him economically ahead. Plus, he's got a... Uh, I hear some attacks happening. Looks like the... Oh, okay. Adame trying to sneak a base. Trying to sneak a hidden sneaky sneak base on a ramp, which is a little bit easier to defend. I think Agistol can honestly ignore it at this stage can just ignore it at this stage. It looks like instead he's bringing his entire army. He's just going to plant a couple lurkers here to catch this probe that was trying to sneak across and get something additional. It, that's not going to happen. But yeah, he's just going to just punish his way up this ramp. Good side storms. And that's, yeah, that's why this is so easy to hold is because those side storms can rain a lot of damage, but there's not enough. No cannons supported. This is enough just meat, bulk Zerg meat to press ahead and wipe everything out that's happening here. So once again, Agistol sitting with a sizable supply lead. I think that might be GG from Adame in not too long because he's just sitting at this 12 o'clock base. He's Yes, he's got the natural, but he doesn't have much of an army to speak of. Critically, he doesn't have a lot of High Templar that I see anywhere out in the map. He might try to even... Okay, he does have two High Templar in the shuttle. This could be the thing that swings him the match. Maybe. Maybe if he can go... Gets, and that doesn't have speed, so gosh. This just feels so slow. Excruciatingly slow. Uh, as a Protoss, right? Swinging out. There's only three drones to even size storm right here, so maybe plop down the Zealot, let it do work. Looks like that is exactly what he's going to do. Maybe he can get some additional damage down here. Dropping one. Is he going to get a storm off? He does get a storm. Does manage to get a, a significant amount of kills. Let's try to keep an eye on. Only gets two kills with that High Templar. Three kills as they move back in, but I think Agisil can actually resupply this line fairly rapidly. With all of the hatchery he's, all the hatcheries he has, and plus all of the minerals he has, grouping the entirety of his army right there. Let's see if he does. He have a spire? He still doesn't have a spire. Just now getting a spire. Just now getting a spire to get I don't know some some uh, scourge out. Looks like 
Adame going ahead and opening his front door to get the rest of that army out. He has managed to macro his way back into this. So he's sitting at even supply. Overall upgrades, he's sitting at level 2 weapons, level 1 armor, but he is going up against level 2 carapace, level 2 weapons. Should be able to take out these lurkers as he's moving across here, but this might be kind of the... Haha, we won the small battle only to get swept by the overwhelming swarm, plus the High Templar are exposed on that back line. Getting some good storms off, I gotta say, but they really wanted to catch a good bulk standing line instead not catching everything they wanted to. Some good storms initially... But still, this is this. I think this might be too much. Observer getting taken. Additional observers getting taken out as well. And I think there are still some lurkers standing. <clears throat> so going to lose map control overall, regardless. Now just still hunting down what's left of that skeleton crew. So now, yeah, additional base is not getting established. The shuttle trying to move its way back around. Let's see if it plops off. I wonder if he's just waiting to get uh, some additional storm energy so he can maybe swing his way back into this. Maybe waiting for an opportunity where he can sneak back in. But Agistol just taking the map, wiping out everything that's there. I think this might be the last standing army for Adame. We'll see. The natural's looking very thin. This is still mining. He has all sorts of cannons. But I don't feel... Again, I don't feel like Agistol even needs to take this. He just needs to kill these extension... These extensions? Is that the right word? These exterior? These exterior attack forces that are going trying to establish a additional base. Scourge taking out the shuttle. Glad I caught that on screen. I was like, yes, gonna catch it. All he has to do is keep wiping out these armies as they come, and Adame is just going to starve out. Six o'clock base, or sorry, four o'clock base, not quite mining yet. I like the Overlord there to see as it was coming in. There is a probe right there. Wasting, I got to say, that's a bit of a wasted storm. He's only going to catch three Hydralisks and a little bit of some Zerglings after the fact. He really needed to wait until he had the bulk of the... Oh, never mind. Follow-up storm. Additional storm, but there's still more coming. Does he have any more storms? This is where, yeah, he would want those storms where they're all gathered. And this is just storm bait. Morphing into an Archon. Agis still, still trying to press up the ramp. Losing more and more units, though, as it's happening. I think these cannons might get up, and that's going to make Agistol's life even more difficult. Archon holding line has a lot of shield to do it, plus the mischance is going to make this even more difficult to deal with. More reinforcements moving across. But another army sweeping across, but <laughs> guess what they're going to run into? That is a whole lot of lurkers to push that army back. Adame is just going to go ahead and re-maneuver them to try to find any sort of soft underbelly that he can find. But I think just through pure reinforcements being built somewhere on the map, that army might get taken care of. There are two sunken colonies as he's diving into the 9 o'clock. Even if he takes the 9 o'clock, the 4 o'clock is still up. And this is an army that he needed to establish some form of map control. He's got to wipe out essentially everything that Agistol has with this army, and I just don't think it's going to happen. The Zealots dealing with Zerglings on the front, yeah, as the reinforcement coming online, it looks like all those lurkers transplanting themselves from the 12 o'clock into this base, and that army is gone. Melted, and I don't think they even, they maybe got a drone or two. They didn't even get to establish themselves on that drone line. Took out a couple of creep colonies, not much else. <clears throat> still plenty of hatcheries, still plenty of minerals in Agistol's control. You can see he's got a huge bank. And we are down to naturals completely mined out. We are mining just at this 1 o'clock, or 12 o'clock? 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock base. And that is going to be it. And that is... Ooh, the probes... The probes are... Oh, okay, for a second there, I thought they were messing around and getting blockaded and going to uh, doing move, maneuver them with... Blah, blah, blah. Let's talk, Diggity. They're going to re-maneuver themselves back towards the main and hit a bunch of lurkers as they go. Now a lurker contain on the front. And I... Th yeah. Honestly, I'm kind of waiting for a GG any second here. Ooh, a lot of Zerglings getting stormed. Agistol just needs to continue to macro up, continue to pour things, and just end this um, if he wants to. Everything's in his control right at this stage. Ooh. Poor Dragoon. He's like, I'm just going to wander out here. We'll see what happens. And then he dies to a Zergling. The most humiliating death for, for a Dragoon. Maybe not the most humiliating death. I think the most humiliating death is... Uh, what is the most humiliating death for a Dragoon? Maybe dying to another Dragoon after like a misfire from your own... Give it some thought, people. I'd like to hear your thoughts. And the most humiliating death for a Dragoon. Probe trying to sneak out. All it's going to see is a hatchery that's already being taken before it explodes. I'm not sure it even got to see that. Another attack force moving out. Agistol moving up with the rest of his lurkers, the rest of his hydralisks. Storms not catching a lot there. They are going to catch a bit of a lurker. Archon's being very rapidly taken out here on the front. 
and being shoved back to his main. Actually, I think that's a misfire. Accidentally attacking their own cannons. Yeah, I think a self-kill because you accidentally killed your own cannon. That, that's the most humiliating death for a Dragoon. Thank you, game, for filling that in for me. Agistol doing a good job of spending his bank as well. Has an Ultralisk out with armor upgrade. There's GG from Adame after seeing the Ultralisk finally out. So, a long one. I feel like Agistol controlled it top to bottom. Top to bottom. So that is a game apiece. We're going to move on to game three in this initial match of Group A of Chobu League. Once again, by the way, you guys, if you want to participate, BSL. Uh, check out their website if you search for Bomba BSL Brood War or Bombastic Star League. I think it's BombasticStarLeague.com. I should know that by now. I uh, <laughs> just type it into my bar. It autofills. You can participate and go on the ladder and try to uh, try to get into Chobo League. Um, someone's linking it in Twitch chat for people there. It is Bombastic Star League. Bombastic, a little bit difficult. To, I think they were going for the B. They're like, what starts with B? So it can be ASL and BSL. But Season 12 has just started. So if you want to participate, it is open essentially to all levels of players. And all you need to participate in Chobo League is 30 games, according to Nooks. Thank you, Sony, in chat. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, Going to move on to the next game. Thank you for listening.